The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Character LCD displays are a great way to show the information output from your Arduino. They can display text, numbers, sensor data, and whatever you want. Instead of using a serial monitor on your computer to display sensor readings, you can show them on an LCD. That lets your project run without having the Arduino connected to a computer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect these displays to the Arduino and how to print text, custom characters, and sensor data. Each character of an LCD is made up of a 5x8 rectangle of pixels. You can get displays with different numbers of rows and columns. 16x2 LCDs are probably the most common. It's called 16x2 because there are two rows and 16 characters per row. You can also get 8x2 LCDs and 20x4 LCDs. Most character LCDs are driven by a Hitachi HD44780 display driver. I'm going to use a 16x2 LCD in the following examples, but if you have a different size display, the code is easy to modify. This display has a blue background with white text, but you can also get them with green backgrounds and dark text. They also come with either serial connections like this one, or with I2C connections like this one. There's a little I2C backpack on the back of this one that converts the serial data to I2C. This little potentiometer here adjusts the character contrast. I like using the I2C enabled LCDs since they only need two pins for data, SCL and SDA. Here's the VCC and ground. Serial LCDs use six pins for data, plus a few others for ground connections and character contrast. Let's look at how to set up a serial LCD first, then we'll look at how to set up an I2C LCD. 16x2 serial LCDs have 16 pins. On my display, the first pin is the VSS pin. This is the ground pin of the display. The second pin is the VDD pin. It connects to five volts. There's a VE pin. This pin controls the character contrast or brightness. This pin connects to ground with a resistor. The lower the resistance, the brighter the characters will be. If you want an adjustable character contrast, you can connect it to ground with a potentiometer. The RS pin is the register select pin. It selects the display driver's command register when low and the data register when high. The RW pin is the read-write pin. Switch it low to write to the selected register. Switch it high to read from the selected register. The E pin makes the data get sent to the data pins when a high to low signal change is sent to it. These are the data pins, numbered D0 to D7. The data pins receive the character data we want to display on the LCD. There are 8 pins, but we only need to use 4 of them. 
These two pins supply power to the backlight LEDs. The backlight anode pin connects to the LED's anode, so that connects to VCC. We're going to put a current limiting resistor in series with this pin. If you wanted to adjust the backlight brightness, you could use a potentiometer. The backlight cathode pin is tied to the backlight LED's cathode, so it just connects to ground. The LCD connects to the Arduino like this. The VSS pin connects to ground. VDD connects to 5 volts. The VE pin has a current limiting resistor connected to ground. I'm using a 1 kilo ohm resistor, but if you want the text brighter, you can use a smaller resistance. Or you could use a potentiometer for adjustable contrast. The RS pin connects to Arduino pin 12. RW connects to ground. The E pin connects to Arduino pin 11. Data pins D0 to D3 are not connected. Data pins D4 to D7 connect to Arduino pins 5 to 2. Then we have another current limiting resistor connecting the backlight anode pin to 5 volts. Smaller resistances will make the backlight brighter, and larger resistances will make it darker. I'm using a 1 kilo ohm resistor here too, but use whatever you want, or use a potentiometer for adjustable brightness. The backlight cathode pin connects directly to ground. Okay, now let's look at how to program serial LCDs. We'll be using an Arduino core library called Liquid Crystal. So if it's not already installed in your library's folder, you can download it with the library manager. Let's check out a simple Hello World sketch to see how to initialize the display and print text to it. The sketch is pretty simple. The first thing we do is include the Liquid Crystal library. Then we create an object called LCD from the Liquid Crystal class. The LCD object takes six parameters, the Arduino pin numbers that connect to the LCD. The first parameter is the Arduino pin where the LCD's RS pin connects. The second parameter is the Arduino pin that the E pin connects to. The next four parameters are the pins where the LCD's data pins connect. This is D4, D5, D6, and D7. In the setup section, we call the begin function on the LCD object. The begin function initializes the display and sets the number of rows and columns. I'm using a 16x2 LCD with 16 columns and 2 rows. So here I have 16, 2. In the loop section, we can use the set cursor function to position the first character of text printed on the display. The first parameter sets the column coordinate. The second parameter sets the row coordinate. The coordinates are zero indexed. So this sets the text position at the upper left hand corner. To print a string of text, we can use the print function. The text you want to print goes inside quotation marks. You can also print numbers. This will print the number 10. And variables too. This will print the value stored in the sensor reading variable. For now, I'm just going to print hello world. So I'll upload this. So there's the hello world text printed from the zero zero coordinate. To print on the bottom row, change the row parameter to a 1. There's a lot more you can do with this library. It has functions for scrolling text, printing custom characters, clearing the display, blinking text, and more. 
but since I2C LCDs are going to be the best choice for most projects, I'd rather spend more time showing you the I2C library. So now let's see how to use I2C LCD displays. I2C LCDs only use two data pins, so wiring to the Arduino is pretty easy. Ground connects to ground, and VCC connects to 5 volts. On the Arduino Uno, the SDA pin is pin A4, and the SCL pin is pin A5. So the SDA pin of the LCD connects to Arduino pin A4, and the SCL pin of the LCD connects to Arduino pin A5. If you're using a different Arduino, just connect SDA to SDA and SCL to SCL. Once everything's connected, we can program the display. We're going to use a library called Liquid Crystal I2C to program the display. You can download it from GitHub. Each I2C device has its own I2C address. And to send data to the LCD, we need to know that address. We can find the I2C address with a sketch called I2C Scanner. I2C Scanner is a really useful sketch that prints the address of any I2C device to the serial monitor. Go to the resource page of the sketch. And copy all this code. Then paste it into the IDE. And upload it. Open up the serial monitor. It says here, I2C device found at address 0x3f. So that's the I2C address of my LCD. Now let's look at a Hello World sketch to see how to initialize the display and print text to it. I2C depends on the built-in wire library, so we have to include that. Then we include the Liquid Crystal I2C library. Now we create a Liquid Crystal I2C object called LCD. We pass the object the display's I2C address and the number of columns and rows the display has. My I2C address is 0x3f, so that's what I put as the first parameter here. And I'm using a 16 by 2 LCD. So I have a 16 and a 2 here. In the setup section, we use the init function to initialize the display. Then we use the backlight function to turn on the LCD's backlight. In the loop section, we set the cursor position. Here it's set at coordinate 0, 0. So text will be printed from the top left corner of the display. Then we use the print function to send the hello world text string to the display. Okay, now that we've seen how to print text strings, let's see how to draw custom characters and print them to the LCD. This sketch prints three custom characters, a degree symbol, a thermometer, and a water drop. The sketch starts out by including the wire and liquid crystal I2C libraries. Then we create an LCD object and pass it the I2C address of the LCD and the number of columns and rows. Now we define the custom characters. Custom characters are defined as an array of bytes. So we declare the array as a byte. This array will define the degree symbol, so it's named degree. There are eight elements in the array, so we have an eight inside the square brackets. Each element is a byte that defines which pixels in each row will be on or off. A zero turns the pixel off, and a 1 turns the pixel on. 
If you look at the ones here, you can kind of make out the shape of the degree symbol. To generate the byte array code, I used an online custom character generator. This is the one that I like to use. I've defined two other custom characters. A thermometer symbol that can be used with temperature sensor readings. And a water drop symbol that could be used with humidity sensor readings. In the setup section, we initialize the display with the init function and turn on the backlight LEDs with the backlight function. Then we have to use the create care function. The create care function converts the byte arrays into characters that can be printed to the LCD. It takes two parameters. The first parameter is the number of the byte array in the order as it appears in the sketch. The parameter is zero indexed. So this is array 0. This is array 1. And this is array 2. The second parameter is the name of the array. The first array is named degree, so that goes here. The second array is named thermometer, so that goes here. And the third array is called drop, so that goes here. Now in the loop section, we print the characters to the display. First we use the home function, which positions the text at the 00, zero coordinate. Then I'm going to print some text that says sensor readings. Now I'm going to use the set cursor function to position the cursor at column coordinate 0 and row coordinate 1. The write function prints the character to the LCD. It only takes one parameter the number of the bit array to be printed. The degree symbol is the first array in the sketch. So I use LCD write with the zero inside the parentheses. I'll have the thermometer symbol print to the bottom row. So I'll set the cursor position to column seven, row one. The thermometer array is the second array in the sketch. So we use LCD write with the number one in parentheses. I'll print the water drop symbol at column 15, row 1. The drop array is the third in the sketch, so we put a 2 for the first parameter. Let's upload this and see what it looks like. So sensor readings is printed to the top row. In the bottom row, the degree symbol is printed at column position 0. The thermometer is printed at column position 7. And the water drop is printed at column position 15. Now let's see how to print sensor data to the display. I'm going to demonstrate this with the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. We'll learn about the DHT11 in a later video, so don't worry about how it works right now. It's just an example to demonstrate how to get a sensor reading printed on the display. The I2C LCD connects to the Arduino with the SDA pin going to pin A4 and the SCL pin going to pin A5. The LCD's ground and VCC pins are shared with the DHT11's ground and VCC pins. The signal pin of the DHT11 connects to Arduino pin 5. The DHT11 uses a library called DHTLib. You can download it from this link. At the top of the sketch, we need to include the wire library, the liquid crystal I2C library, and the DHTLib library. Then we define the DHT11 signal pin, which is connected to pin 5. We create a DHT object. Then we create an LCD object and pass it the I2C address of the LCD. Then we pass it the number of columns and rows on our display. Like the last sketch, we create the custom characters by declaring byte arrays. 
In the setup section, we initialize the display with the init function. Then we turn on the LCD's backlight LEDs with the backlight function. Now we use the create care function for each custom character we declared above. The array number is the first parameter and the array name is the second parameter. In the loop section, the first line gets the humidity and temperature readings from the DHT11. The temperature reading is stored in DHT.temperature, and the humidity reading is stored in DHT.humidity. Let's print the temperature reading to the top row of the LCD and print the humidity on the bottom row. I'll use the home function to position the cursor at coordinate 00. Then I'll print the thermometer symbol. So we have the write function applied to the LCD object with array 1 as the argument. Then we print an equal sign and a space. Next we use the print function again, this time with dht.temperature in parentheses. dht.temperature holds the temperature reading from the DHT11, so that will be printed next. Then we'll print the degree symbol, so I use the write function again. The degree symbol is array 0, so I put that as the argument. The DHT11 outputs the temperature in Celsius, so I'll put a C after the degree symbol. To print the humidity reading on the bottom row of the LCD, I've set the cursor at column 0, row 1. To print the water drop symbol, we use the write function again. The drop array is array number 2, so that's the argument. Then I print another equal sign with a space. The humidity reading from the DHT11 is stored in DHT.humidity. So we use the print function again with DHT.humidity as the argument. Then we finish it off with a percent sign. Okay, let's see if this works. I have a DHT11 and LCD connected to the Arduino here. The thermometer and temperature reading are printed on the top line, and the water drop and humidity reading are printed on the bottom line. Okay, good. It's working as expected. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.